So we'll look at the most, you know, we'll do what's called a positional assessment and mm -hmm. we'll look at the most challenging position that they must move into. Right. So for a squat, it's to get into that bottom position. Right. Now, if they can't, mm -hmm. then it's our objective to figure out on the spot what is preventing them from getting to that bottom position. Right. And we talk about key things, so for example, we we'll talk about what's called the talocrural joint, which is the ankle joint, which is really the foundation of the squat. Mm -hmm. So if someone lacks mobility in the talocrural joint, mm -hmm. then the knee can't progress over the foot as they drop down towards the hole, which means their pelvis can't drop towards the base of support it gets thrown forward. Right. And you see the classic someone leaning forward, mm -hmm. rounding at their back as they're trying to shift the center of gravity back towards their base of support. Right. Now we used to look at that and go, well, what could be going on? Is it tight hips, tight hamstrings? Right, right, right. You know, is it weak lumbar mm. rectus? Mm. In actual fact, it was just lack of mobility in the talocrural joint or, the, or right. the ankle joint. Right. So what my students will do is they will see that mm. um, they will go down and use what's called an assessment intervention reassessment method, mm. where they assess the poor positional you know profile for the lift. Mm. They'll identify a possible say talocrural joint limitation. Mm. They'll then on the gym floor mobilise that talocrural joint, mm. get mobility back, mm. so the knee can move over the foot, mm. and then we'll reassess the bottom position again mm. and we should see an improvement mm. so by actually using the lift that we want to get them as the assessment, as the assessment yeah. it saves a lot of time right. you can get people under the bar training very yeah. very quickly yeah. so I suppose that's obviously really good for power lifters and stuff that just needs to keep actively keep working yeah power lifters weight lifters even just the recreational lifter right, right. you know I find a lot of times wasted by doing different sorts of length tension assessments or movement assessments that don't relate to the main movement or the primary movement we want to train mm. and then we've got to try and do is, is transfer the information extrapolate it to the lift that we're doing and it, it doesn't really work mm. I mean if you're going to take someone and you're going to load them in a squat mm. right well looking at how they might do push-ups how they might be able to do a lunge pattern or mm. whatever mm. it's not going to tell you what's mm. going to happen in that squat as they start moving up towards a maximal load mm. you know the only way you're going to know is if you start loading them see where the lift okay. starts to miss right yeah so you know it's pretty much it's it's, it's kind of funny, but if you go back to how we used to do things, mm. you know, if, if I was a top Olympic weightlifting coach, well, I would qualify someone for the lifts that they're going to do. Right. You know, the overhead squat, right. you know, look at their ability to snatch and clean and jerk, etc. You know, and if they couldn't get into those positions, I would correct it so they could do the lifts. Right. You know, I wouldn't get them off and say, let's see how you do push-ups, let's see how you do this and do that, and try and extrapolate information. Right. And we're kind of getting so obsessed with these assessments right. that we're forgetting the, the fundamentals. Right. And that is, if you want to squat, right. let's qualify them for the squat. Right. Let's look at the orthopedic profile right. for the squat, right. and then let's look at the strength profile for the squat. Right. And that's your ability to generate force and control loading in that movement. Right. You know, I mean, I've known Paul now for about 15 years, and you know, the, the great thing about that is he's always challenged me mm. and he, he's always taught me to critically think mm. and to create something that is inherently something I believe in to be true. Mm. You know, and I honestly believe, you know, without his influence, I never would have got to a level of understanding where I'd be brave enough exactly. to, yeah. to start trying to look outside of the, you know, the current models. Right. You know, and it's that foundation that he gave me and that, that deep understanding of the body mm. and the you know, holistic model mm. Um, that allowed me to, to do something that was true to me and that was how can I apply this more to the specialised field of strength and conditioning because that's really where my passion laid. You know, and you know, it was interesting because the presentation I did here at the Czech conference was the first time Paul has actually seen me present oh. the FMA stuff. So, oh, okay. Yeah, okay. so it was a little bit nerve wracking, you know, to see your, your mentor and stuff sitting yeah. in the back there yeah. and you're going, here I am, I'm presenting it, mm. representing you, mm. you know, please like it. <laughs> so what was the, and finally, what was the feedback that Paul gave you from your conference and learning, you know, obviously more about how you've developed your own approach from his foundation? Yeah, it was uh, quite an emotional moment for me. It was mm. at, at the gala and he, he gave me a hug and stuff and, mm. you know, saying a few things, but, you know, the thing that he said that really emotionally, you know, connected with me was, he goes, what I've done with strength and conditioning mm. is, sort of on par to what he's done with the body. Wow. You know, you said you managed to take the, the, the foundation principles that he taught me mm. and apply it to strength and conditioning in a way that no one else has done and create a model of understanding for students mm. and that he was really proud of that. So, yeah, yeah it, was, well, it was emotional. Cool. So, yeah. All right, guys, so you heard it here. Mark Buckley's basically explaining his foundation, his new leap forward in, in his progress from learning with Paul Czech. And, um, yeah, hopefully you'll be able to catch us again at another talk with another expert. Mark, thanks for your time. No worries, thank you. And yeah, right. see you guys later.